A Julia Robinson Mathematics Festival is an opportunity for students to explore mathematics in the way mathematicians play with mathematics. You have a series of tables, and at each table there's kind of a class of problems. Maybe the easiest one in that class is something that a sixth grader could get. And maybe the hardest one in that class is an advanced research problem that we don't even know what the answer is yet, but they're all related in some way. And so you can find a problem that you like, you can get together with other people at the same table who are attracted to that same class of problem, and you can work your way through it together. It's a lot closer to what mathematicians actually do. We'll have 10 to say 20 stations with one activity per station and perhaps one or two volunteers per station. We call them facilitators or table leaders. And students get to choose what activities they want to engage with. Finding something that you can't quite see through and then staying with it and working through it and getting to the end is something that I think everybody knows the satisfaction of. So the first kid that sat down at our table was really impatient. We were building a hexaflexagons, and I was trying to show him how to fold it, and he was like, I don't get it, I don't get it, I don't get it. I think that every kid that has been coming, I've had to learn to adapt the way I explain it. Every single time a kid finishes their hexaflexagon and the first time that they unfold it to a new color, they, they're just like, oh my god, and I think that's really cool. I'm here because I'm very interested in math, and numbers are like, what I do most of the time, I take numbers and try and figure things out with them. We bring him to these because it's a way for him to be in his space. So whenever we come here, he lights up, his face lights up because there's folks that speak his language. And so he really feels in his element. So we've brought him to several of these um, festivals and he loves them. I'm able to uh, see all different kinds of puzzles and I don't have to come up with them by myself. I'm able to have it like right in front of me. I'm able to solve them. So 7, 5, that makes 12. And then plus 4, that's 16. So, so let's put the 3 right here and then you can put the 4 right there. Well, here's a question. If we have a 5 in the middle, what do these two numbers have to add up to? So now the question is... Are you able to they can add up to 5 to 10. Who adds to 10 with 4? Four? Uh, 4, that's 6. 6. So 6. Who adds to 10 with 7? 7 and 3. And, three. and then 2, then 5. Ah. Yeah. And then 5 is all alone. Yeah. Growing up, I was never really exposed to like the fun side of math. I always liked it for some reason. I just knew that the kids around me didn't like it. <laughs> and I always thought that when I got older, I would want to find a way to like change that. In China, we just do a lot of... Yeah questions and uh, repeat and remember <laughs> but here I think it's more attractive to the kids and they will think it's interesting and they want to learn by themselves not the parents push them to learn <laughs> it's totally different your festival is going to be as good as your facilitators they must be familiar with the activity and they must be willing to play with students yeah I like that idea yeah, you're using the symmetry, that's great. There you go. A lot of the volunteers are studying math, right? To be able to see, oh hey, this is somebody who also loves math, who is pursuing it in college and universities, right? I think that's important to him, but also the interactions and, and seeing it come to life. I'm going around the tables, helping the volunteers teach them how to play the math games that we're doing. Whenever they do something right, you gotta be just as excited or even more to get them focused and kind of know the kids too, helps a lot. Numbers, they can like add up and they never stop. It's just really magical. She was not really confident with the math and the right now she's quite confident. I think it's the worst. I, I take more chance and more way to teaching her. You're only trying them that way. Try turning them and putting them here. Puzzles are probably one of my favorite things. Puzzles require you to think more. For example, one of them I just did was one where you have like these penguins and you put them on a scale and you're trying to balance it out on both sides and you have to figure out how you can get them to balance. Some of them were quite difficult. Others weren't as difficult. We try to select activities that are what's considered in the literature low threshold, high ceiling. Anybody, regardless of their mathematical background, can understand at least 
the basic idea of what's going on and perhaps uh, answer a few questions. We are there to explore with them. I like the patterns. The problems are challenging too. And then you can go there or there. And then both get you to the center. The way we judge whether we're successful or not is very much how attentive the kids are. It is our job to find the right presentation and the right activities to attract the kids. We've been doing this for 12 years. We're hosting a little over 100 festivals a year. At the end of this year, we will have helped host close to 500 festivals around the world. What we want to do is reach out to minority communities, immigrant communities, working class communities, rural communities. A way to reach underserved communities is to go to whole smaller festivals uh, at libraries or at, at local schools. We want to support them and we want to help them build a collection of materials that they can use year after year. There's so much you can do at a math festival. But then some parents and some teachers will say, how do we follow up? And a math circle is the ideal place to follow up with those ideas. With the math circle then, we're able to kind of like take a lot of this enthusiasm and we're able to give them this mathematical engagement in kind of like a slower, more sustained way. Students here might spend anywhere from like 15 minutes to 50 minutes on. We'll actually take this whole activity and make it into an hour long lesson with the students. Math circles and math festivals go well together. They complement each other. Um, the way I like to think about math festivals is as an introduction to math circles or as a way to celebrate the end of a semester. We want students to experience mathematics the way mathematicians experience mathematics. And when mathematicians do mathematics, the constraints come from the problems themselves. The goal is to create a society that values mathematical ideas and can use that mathematical training, that logical training, that artistic training to other facets of life. Just knowing that feeling, like if I'm presented with a hard problem, it's like, yeah, I can get through it somehow. I may have to ask for advice, depending on what it is, but there is an answer and it's achievable and you can get there.